Hey, what's going on, y'all? Excuse me, I just got up not too long ago, so might sound and uh, look a little groggy in this video. Excuse me. I uh, shall be putting up another one today, so no worries there. You shall see a more awake and attentive Caesar. But I wanted to start the day off with a uh, something I feel God put in my spirit to share with y'all because He gave me a bit of a vision and the spirit this morning, just as I was thinking to Him and thinking with Him and. You know, he presented me, showed me a spirit that just, you know, was mostly pure, but had some things wrong with it. I was kind of interacting with the spirit and, and something just compelled me, the Holy Spirit compelled me to say that you got to get 100 percent. You got to get 100 percent right with God. You have to get 100 percent right with the Lord. And yeah, because I just sensed that there were that she was a pure spirit, but there was just certain things that were not correct. And by the end of this, by the end of our existence, God wants us to be 100% pure with Him. We have to be 100% right with Him, you know, and, and pure before Him. We have to be, uh, you know, pleasing in His sight. It says that the lukewarm one, the, the, the one that is lukewarm, He spits them out. And, I, you know, I look around at the church, and I see a lot of people who are lukewarm. I see a lot of people who don't really love God like that, who are really using God as a religion. It's like a badge that they show people, a social badge, like, oh, yes, I'm a Christian. Yes, I, I, yes, I believe in God. Yo, it says in the word that Satan believes in God and the demons believe in God and they shudder. Are you someone who believes in God, but when you think about Judgment Day, you shudder because you, you got some things in your life that are not aligned with him? You know, I feel God put it on my spirit that this is a message that needs to go out there, that, that, that there are some people out there, this might be yourself, who may not be fully right with the Lord Most High. And we have to be. We have to be right before Him because our souls are at stake. Our souls are in peril if we do not. God will spit us out, it says in His Word. You know, He'll spew us out. It says in some translations, He will vomit us. That's how displeasing lukewarm, uh, a lukewarm faith is before Him. And, and you know, it's there were some people, I think, are really there, they're, they're living life content to kind of just scrape into heaven's gates, you know what I mean, to just barely make it. And that, that displeases God immensely, and I'll, I'll give you the rationale as to why, I feel the Lord kind of enlightened me on this, so thank you Holy Spirit. It's like, whenever we, whenever we say, okay, I'm going to settle for less, I'm going to still, I'm, I'm going I'm gonna, I'm gonna to settle for less because in the end I don't want to do more. You know, it's like, I don't, want, I don't want to serve more, so I'll settle for less. That's the same mentality Satan had. You know, when he was before God, he said, I don't want to serve you. I don't want to serve your goodness. I don't want to be up under your goodness. I don't want to submit to your good, God. But I will settle to rule less. I will settle to be independent of you and to be a lord of less than, of less than you, which is evil, of the glitch in the system. You know, he, he settled to be lord of, of all things evil. And when we think about it like that, when we decide to settle for less than what we can achieve, we when we decide to settle for a paltry relationship with God, maybe even not a relationship at all and purely the religion of it. Oh, yes, yeah, so I believe in Jesus and I believe in that. And I believe this. So I'm going to heaven and none of the faith, none of the walk of the none of the walk with God, none of that actually living for him, letting him prune you and refine you and polish you and change you and renew you and remake you into your best self. You know, God is a true alchemist. <laughs> you know, if we're talking alchemy, you know, like you know these, you know these, uh, these, you know, alchemists, they're trying to figure out how to turn, to turn base material into gold. This is all just, all just foolishry. You know, what I'm saying it's all the devil's imitation of what God has done with us. He has taken our base worm soul and he converts it into something that is divine and pure and golden before him. You know, you know that's it's it's the Lord's magic. It's it's not <laughs> it's not magic. It's miraculous, you know what I'm saying, and 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 you know it's it's not a it's not mystical, you know what I mean it's 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 a miracle, and that's that's the beautiful thing about God. And it's not mystical, it's mysterious. Like like God, God is God is God is so God is so divine in His ways, and the devil will try to imitate God in all His ways, all God in all His goodness, and not only imitate it but twist God's goodness for evil, and He'll do that in our lives specifically. You know the gifts that God has given us. He'll try and he'll try and make us use those things that God gave us for His evil. Again, He settled for less to become the Lord of evil. He wants you to use settle for less with your gifts and use them for wrong. When you know you have the potential to go out and use those gifts for the greater good, 
you know, there are some people who have a greater talent at public speaking or, you know, like a confidence to go up to people and sell door to doors. And those people, they're not the kind of people that go up and evangelize, but that's, that's their calling. That's why God put them on this earth to go out and evangelize. But instead, they, they use that ability to go sell and then support themselves with door to door, not supporting themselves. They're letting God support them as they, you know, sub, as they spread the word of God. You know, it says in this word that when he sent the disciples out, he said, only take a stay, only take a staff with you. You know, that's the Lord. He, he said, he said, only take a staff, you know, take nothing else. Don't even take two tunics. He said, don't even take two shirts, bro. He said, just take your one outfit and go and spread my gospel. And, and, <laughs> and look at us in this modern day and age, you know, like, you know, we, we, we think that to have a ministry, you need $10 million and a mega church and, you know, all this and that. No, all you need is a phone camera. And, and some persistence. All you need is a brain that knows the gospel feet that are that are wrapped with the gospel piece, having that full armor of God. And, and when you go out and, and having a, a full body, a fully a sober mind, you know what I mean, a, a awakened mind that is ready to, to do the will of Christ in the world. And, you know what I'm saying, an aware mind. And that's, that's all you need to go out and evangelize. You know what I'm saying? Like, when we realize that it doesn't take very much to serve God, when, when we just put ourselves at his feet and, and just do what he asks of us it doesn't take a whole lot y'all and it leads us into a greater paradise and this is why god doesn't want us to settle for less he doesn't want us to be lukewarm he wants us to get a hundred percent right with him and at the very least we have to be willing to go through the process of that refinement so that he can get us to a semblance of that place again at the very least because there are some people who won't let god take them through that process they resist god in every way and and they you know they, they come against the lord most high as opposed to working with him and allowing him to work in their lives. And these people, you know, these are people that are doomed, doomed for death. This is what, you know, he's saying uh, when he says, don't blaspheme the Holy Spirit. You know, it's like when you come against the spirit of God that is working to make positive change in your life, when you say, ah, I'm not going to listen to you. And, and worse yet, you say, that's a bad voice. That's an evil voice. I'm not like, I'm not going to listen to that voice because that's a wrong voice. When you start when you start getting into that territory, when you start saying, "Okay, well, this is the devil," as they were in that passage, this must be the devil. This must be evil. I'm, I, you know, when you start cursing against that spirit that's helping you, you've now put yourself on the path to never listen to it again. You've built in a habit of never listening to that voice that's actually trying to lead you to your best self, that's leading you to God, that's leading you to improve yourself. Even Christians can do this, and, and believers, you know, people who are religious, and you know, this is when you when you it's essentially. Killing the religion for the relationship, or killing the relationship for the religion. Yeah, Tony Evans was talking about if you don't, um, if you don't, if you don't, like a lot of people, you know, the church, they got the religion, but they sacrifice that for the relationship. And that's where we got to, we have to focus on the relationship. The religion is secondary to the relationship. And, and, you know, you know, the relationship is most important. There are some people who live on the streets, you know what I'm saying, who, who barely know any of the word of God, but they have a relationship with him. And so when they fall, when they when they get transformed from this life to the next, they're going to heaven with him forever. And, you know, it's like, and there are some people who live their whole lives knowing all the theology of the Bible, knowing all the ins and outs of his word, and yet they never formed a real relationship with him. And so when they die, they are sentenced to their master, Satan. You know, and it's like, if, if you don't have a relationship with Christ... You know, you can do all the good works in the world, but you're doing them for yourself. You're not doing them for God. You know what I'm saying? This is why he says in his word that um, all those, you know, who come before him talking about, Lord, Lord, did we not, you know, uh, uh, you know, cast out demons in your name, perform miracles in your name, you know, heal the sick in your name. Did we not do all these wonderful and miraculous things in your name? And they'll say, be gone from me, ye workers of iniquity, for I never knew you. All ye works that you did were in vain. And notice this, in vain. Now, not only were they useless in a, in a sense, in a waste, but they were in vain, in vanity. You were doing this, you know, to please yourself. You were doing this to, to, to vex, or not to vex, but to, to, to satisfy yourself. And by satisfying yourself, you're satisfying your flesh and you're vexing your spirit. That's why in uh, Ecclesiastes, he always talks about vanity and vexation of spirit. You're vexing your spirit with your vanity. With, with your pleasure of self, you vex your, your, the Spirit and the Holy Spirit within you. But, you know, the Spirit of God, you are vexing that. And it is that notion that, it is that notion that we, we, should, we should seek to move away from all pleasures. We should seek to, not necessarily all pleasures, but we should seek to weaken our flesh to strengthen our spirit, not the other way around. And there are a lot of people living out here nowadays that are living to strengthen their flesh over their spirit. 
And I pray that in this life, you would seek to strengthen your spirit and let God prune your flesh. Let him take those pieces of you that are useless, that have become, you know, uh, um, corrupted, that have become blotted and, and that have blight. Those pieces of you that are no longer clean and, and holy before him, let him cut those pieces off of you so that new growth can come in, that his holy righteousness can grow. And listen, that's not a comfortable process, but it's when you allow yourself to go through that, that your plant, that your whole system, your whole, your whole being becomes healthier. And more righteous before God, and that, and and here, the whole operation is to produce fruits, right? The whole operation is to produce fruits for the harvest, so that when God harvests us, we are bountiful with our fruits. And so, let yo, God is the farmer, bro. He, he's he's the sole farmer, and he just wants us to be to be holy before him. He just wants us to bear the the big the biggest harvest. And you know, the the thing with the tares is they stand up proud. You know, what I mean, the tares, and they don't they don't bear any fruit. They don't bear any wheat, you know. They don't bear any, anything that you can use. Now, there's nothing that you can grind down there. It's it's a very paltry seed, but it's the wheat that are so heavy, that are so full, they bend over in submission. And so that's what we have to do, y'all. We have to be so bountiful with fruit that we're just bending over in submission to God with how heavy the fruit of our labor is. And you know, we got to bear good fruit in this season, y'all. So let God prune the bad parts of you off so that you you produce the best most beautiful and bounteous fruit. I pray that uh, that they, that if you have some things in your life that are not pleasing before God and that God has convicted you with any of those things in this video, especially if you stayed to this point, I pray that you would truly consider, truly take those things into consideration, take those things before God and seek his direction on how you should best remove those things from your life because he has a way, he has a divine pathway. And when you let him work through you, you can make some absolutely amazing changes. And again, produce that bountiful fruit for that inevitable harvest. All right, y'all. I pray that this video edified you and uh, gave you uh, some daily bread. You know, something that you can sustain yourself on as we go through this, this walk of life. All right. Take care, y'all. Shalom.